Good evening, everyone. Um, you just have to excuse me. I may have to put my glasses on and off. Um, my name is Brian Lurie, and I'm the Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Veterinary and Agricultural Sciences. And it is my great pleasure to welcome you here this evening. We have a wonderful representation of veterinary alumni and valued supporters, and that's tremendous to see. The Faculty of Veterinary and Agricultural Sciences comprises two schools, the Melbourne Veterinary School and the School of Agriculture and Food. We have been delighted to recently welcome an internationally recognised leader to join the faculty as our new head of the Melbourne Veterinary School, Professor Anna Meredith. Professor Meredith joined us from the Royal Dick School of Veterinary Studies at the University of Edinburgh, where she was the Professor and Chair of Zoological and Conservation Medicine and Associate Dean International. Professor Meredith was also Director of Postgraduate Taught Programs in the College of Medicine and Veterinary Medicine at the University of Edinburgh, where she was responsible for the strategy, growth and development of 57 postgraduate courses with over 2,000 students. Professor Meredith is a Fellow and Specialist in Zoological Medicine of the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, a Fellow of the Zoological Society of London, and a Specialist in Wildlife Population Health of the European College of Zoological Medicine. Her research in conservation medicine examines the interrelationship between ecosystems, animal and human health. And a very good example of the quality of the, her work is a recent high profile publication in Science that showed British red squirrels harbour two strains of the bacterium that causes leprosy. I would like to now invite Professor Meredith to say a few words. Thank you for that very kind uh, introduction um, and I'd like to reiterate Brian's very warm welcome uh, to all our valued alumni and supporters tonight. Um, just before we were um, uh, setting off tonight, Professor Laurie asked me, he said, do I have to say that it is the Royal Dick School of Veterinary <laughs> Studies? And was asking me about that. I said, yes, that's its proper name. And everyone always says, why on earth is it called the Royal Dick School of Veterinary Studies or the Dick Vet is its colloquial name? You get used to it. I was there for about 26 years and um, you, you get used to the giggles. Uh, it's actually called the Dick Vet because it was founded by Sir William Dick. So now you know. Um, so, so thanks again for your warm welcome. I'm absolutely delighted and I feel very privileged uh, to join the University of Melbourne as head of the Melbourne Veterinary School. Um, as you know, the, uh, the school is one of Australia's leading veterinary schools and a destination of choice for students, academics, professionals and clients uh, for veterinary science. And um, as part of the Faculty of Veterinary and Agricultural Sciences, we've got a real focus on One Health, and we recognise that complex interplay with human and environmental health, which leads to better outcomes for animal health, but also for human health. And that's an area, as Brian alluded to, that I'm particularly interested in. Um, so I come to this wonderful school um, and I'm very proud to be here. It's distinguished by a really strong focus on preclinical disciplines from parasitology to microbiology and pathology. Um, and our staff and students work on projects that bridge the fundamental studies, the fundamental sciences, things like molecular biology um, and epidemiology through to those applied studies such as vaccine and diagnostic test development and even through then to commercialization um, of those. So really right from, um, or some people say Labrador to lab, or lab, lab to Labrador, if you want to put it that way. Um, so we were the first university in Australia um, to introduce the DVM, the graduate professional degree, following very much the, the lead from the United States. Um, and we're really proud of that. And it's, um, it's, it's now in its uh, seventh year. Um, and that enables Australian students access to the US and European veterinary standard training So um, and our accreditation process. So our DVM now is accredited. It's nationally uh, and internationally recognised by both the obviously the Austral Australasian Veterinary Boards Council, the AVMA, the American Veterinary Medical Association and the UK body, the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. So that allows Melbourne graduates to go out anywhere in the world and practice as vets and it's something that gives them a huge advantage. So our, our DVM, our clinical degrees and our master's programmes and also our residency training programmes for, for our up and coming clinicians are really sought after and and internationally respected. 
And our specialist clinical training encompasses both primary and preventative veterinary care um, at the UVET um, Werribee Animal Hospital. Um, and I'll show you some pictures of the exciting developments uh, there in just a couple of minutes. And also now the Golden Valley Equine Hospital. This is a really exciting development over the last year where we've acquired um, a very prestigious equine practice. Um, so that's going to enable our students to be exposed to uh, a really high caseload of first opinion equine cases that, that we can't offer them so much at the Werribee, which is more referral based. So we're really uh, excited to be able to offer that. And this year also um, marks our f the first year of our new tracks program. Again, something we're really proud of. Um, that allows our third year DVM students, so it's a four year program, and in the third year they choose a track um, and it allows them to shape their clinical experience and build a network of professional contacts, uh, contacts in that area. Um, so we still maintain the general broad training um, for our veterinary students, but they can now complete extra practical classes um, and activities in a specialist area, and those are small animals, production animals, equine, um, or um, a more unusual one of government industry and also conservation health. So I think that offers, I think it's really important that we train our students to be aware of all the wide um, careers that they can go into, not just clinic, traditional clinical practice, but with a veterinary degree um, such as ours, they can really have such a breadth of careers, um, which I think is really exciting. And we've got to, you know, I think we've got a really strong duty to, to give them that experience and expertise to make those uh, careers decisions. So let me show you a bit about the construction that's been going on. Um, we've got new teaching buildings um, in both Parkville, um, here in the centre of the city, and at Werribee. And I know a lot of you went through these places and will be hopefully interested to see that. And I would love to welcome you, some of you out there um, when the buildings open to see them. So they're almost complete um, and they'll be ready for semester one classes next year. So out at Werribee, we've got this fabulous new learning and teaching building and I showed, I was privileged enough to show the, vi the new Vice Chancellor around it yesterday um, and our Dean, John Fazakali. And it was just so exciting to see this fantastic, very modern building um, almost uh, completed. It's five stories high um, and it's going to offer, offer absolute state of the art um, accommodation for our students. So it'll uh, provide this broad suite of bioscience training um, to, to uh, spaces to train the next generation. That's the view from the other angle. And what it'll do is it'll link. Uh, so for those of you who know where it'll be, it's sort of um, beside the, where the Oval used to be um, and just beside Kendall Hall. Um, and then there'll be this precinct and landscaping linking uh, the new building to the existing UVET hospital with gardens. There'll be a new cafe there, so much better uh, services for our clients uh, as well as our students and staff and hopefully bringing the site together. Um, that's just another angle from the other side. It's got this wonderful sort of, it's a copper patina uh, on it that looks fantastic. Um, five floors, so coming in at the ground level, we've got this wonderful open plan area for the students, which includes the library um, and, I say, the cafe area and socialising area. You can see it's very modern uh, and engaging. And I, having been through a development of a new building at my previous institution, I know just how much these types of spaces bring people together, um, staff and students. And a well-designed space like this can really change the whole vibe of a, of a school. And I'm really excited to see that happen uh, very soon. So this is the student lounge, very, very much about student welfare, making sure they have relaxation spaces and can talk to their peers and don't feel they're just going from class to class all the time. And then very collaborative teaching spaces. Gone are the traditional uh, sort of lecture theatre, traditional classroom type spaces. We do, we'll, we'll still retain our old lecture theatre, but the new building doesn't have a traditional lecture theatre that you and I uh, are trained in. But these collaborative teaching spaces that can be subdivided, um, small group teaching, we're very much sort of student orientated, um, student led learning, um, and it gives us all these possibilities. And then obviously we do have to still do the traditional things, microbiology and parasitology. So we'll have these wonderful new uh, wet labs up on level three, um, landscape grounds. And at the, the level five, you get the amazing view back over the city skyline all the way from Werribee. It's really fantastic. 
And then the UVET hospital has also recently been refurbished. We're now in that. This opened about three weeks ago, so the staff were really excited to get into here. We've got a lovely new reception area to welcome our clients. Um, and really innovative ideas such as these waiting pods for the, for the clients with their animals. Um, you can see here that you've got a nervous dog and we've got separate areas for cats and exotic pets and also a separate new exotic animal ward as well, which is really exciting, um, so that they can sit there and not be threatened by the next door, you know, barking German shepherd or anything, you know, so that they can feel secure whilst they're waiting. Um, and that's starting to work really well. Wonderful new consulting rooms, again, specifically designed so that we can get large groups of students in there, and uh, the consulting will be very much student-led. And also so that um, it does designed so that the vets and the students aren't turning their back to the client, um, which is a mistake made in so many consulting rooms. It's very much making the client feel part of the whole process um, um, when they bring their animal to us. So that's um, UVET, and um, I'd say delighted to show you um, anyone around that when, they, when it's open. Um, well, that, that bit's open, but the new learning and teaching building. And then here at Parkville, some of you might have seen it on Royal Parade, we've got this Webbs building, the Western Edge Biosciences building. Um, this is going to be open, hopefully, uh, in March for um, se uh, semester one teaching. So it's almost at completion. I looked around about a week ago, and there's, there's still a lot to do, but I'm assured it'll be ready on time. But it's really um, a fantastic building. Um, it's five stories. Two of them are below ground, though. There, there was the great big hole in the ground um, uh, where a car park was, and now that's filled with two whole stories um, and three stories above ground. So this is the view from Tin Alley. Um, it's on the corner there. Lots of glass, very light, open, uh, engaging building. And this fantastic panel of glass going up the, of the whole of the three stories, looking over to the systems garden. So I think our students will be absolutely blown away by this new, new area, and it links with the other areas that they have to go for other aspects of their teaching. This isn't going to be solely occupied by um, the Faculty of Veterinary and Agricultural Sciences. We will share some space um, with, with other faculties, but again, I see that as an opportunity to bring us all together um, and foster uh, collaborations in that space. So... Um, that's that's some really exciting, and I feel um, you know very lucky to come to it to to Melbourne at a time when we've got all these exciting new uh, buildings to move into. And one of my jobs is to make sure that that tr transition happens. So, um, what else was I going to tell you? Yeah, all so much exciting stuff to tell you. Um, since arriving, well, so what have I been doing? Um, I've been here now uh, four months, um, four very exciting months, a real whirlwind uh, tour, really, of, of learning where everything is, getting to know people, doing a lot of listening, uh, meeting people. I think that's very important that I really understand the school. And the, the main thing I've been focusing on is working on with my senior team on developing a new vision and strategy for the next five years. You'll see on the table there the vision of the faculty. Um, as Brian mentioned, we have the two schools, the vet school and the, and the agricultural school. And we've developed our, our school vision and strategy, which aligns with the faculty strategy and the university strategy, really focusing on, on one health. And my particular um, take, it's very simple, and what I want to do is, is, is deliver excellence. Um, that's what the strategy essentially captures, I hope, um, delivering excellence in teaching, research, clinical practice, and also engagement. And ultimately, really being a school that makes a difference, makes a difference to animal health and to human health and welfare. And I mean that in its very broadest sense, so really capturing this, this very broad one health approach. So my key um, school priorities over the next few months include um, ensuring that we meet our accreditation requirements. That's really important. Um, we need to successfully transfer into these wonderful new facilities and integrate the new Goulburn Valley Equine Hospital. And also we're starting to use and integrate more with the Dookie campus that some of you might be aware of up at Shepparton. So there's all sorts of uh, uh, exciting new opportunities up there as well. We've been doing a lot of strategic planning for infrastructure, not just the new buildings, but the rest of the, of the, of the campus and how that's all going to um, make sure it serves its purpose into the future. 
I'm very keen to grow research, um, research income, research capacity across the whole One Health agenda, not just within the school, but very much fostering our collaborations with um, our colleagues in the agricultural school, but also uh, in the medical school um, and biosciences. I think that's very important. And also, you know, perhaps somewhat selfishly, because it's my area of expertise in conservation science, um, I think conservation science and wildlife and ecosystem health is key to human and animal health. Um, and I'm very pleased to um, have made some exciting recent recruitments uh, in that space, and I want to grow that as one of the key fields um, and themes of the school, along with the other things that we're already really strong on. Um, and so, for example, we've uh, recently recruited, they're joining us next year, um, Dr. Lee Skerritt and Lee Berger. And Lee Berger, um, some of you might have heard, read, recently won the Prime Minister's Prize for Science. So um, that's a really exciting addition to the faculty. I want to deliver new courses um, and uh, CPD. I think it's very important that we reach out to the veterinary profession and continue their lifelong learning with continued professional development. Uh, professional development. And these facilities um, add enormous capability in that area as well. And then I think very much of my role as the new leader is to make sure that we get the culture right. I think a lot of, of a successful uh, school is really just about good communication and, and a really healthy culture that's uh, driven around shared values, shared values of excellence, um, respect for each other and communication. So a lot of concentration from me is going to go on student and staff support and student and staff well-being. And as I mentioned earlier, I think we've got a real duty to equip our student for these wide variety of careers and challenges they face going out into what is a really rapidly changing profession. I know some of you in the room work uh, you know, in various er areas of that profession and we see how vets uh, can contribute, but it's changing fast and we need to give them the skills and the resilience to cope uh, with that very rapidly changing but very exciting profession. So you um, and uh, as our alumni and supporters and veterinary partners play a really important role in the school, um, especially in uh, supporting our students through the various mentoring <laughs> programs and providing um, essential work placements. Um, assisting students with scholarships and giving them other opportunities to broaden their horizons and expertise. And also, very importantly, as advocates and, and allies uh, for the school and the faculty and the wider University of Melbourne. So we really appreciate your support. Thank you very much all for coming tonight. I really appreciate you giving up your time. Um, I'm really excited to have already met some of you. Um, and I look forward to spending the next um, hour or so getting to know a few of, uh, more of you better. Um, and I'm looking forward to our further conversations both here tonight and working with you in, in the future. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>